Lyme disease epidemic continues to worsen here in central New York, but doctors and scientists are working on ways to fight back. So we want to welcome in Onondaga County Health Commissioner, Dr. Katie Anderson. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Um, we had your good friend, very good friend, your former boss, Dr. Thomas, uh, in last week to talk about this whole situation. And he detailed how these ticks are not just carrying Lyme, but, uh, but a lot more um, dangerous diseases, viruses, things like that. This seems like it is getting worse. Am I right? And how concerning is that to you? Yeah, so tick-borne disease is a major problem for central New York. We're in kind of a special region of the country. The upper Midwest and the northeast of the U.S. are particularly hit hard mm. by tick-borne diseases. Here we think mostly of Lyme disease, which does seem to be worsening. And some of that could be related to our wetter and warmer winters mm. that spread out when the ticks can be around spreading disease. We know from surveillance, from trapping ticks and testing them, that between six, excuse me, 40 to 60% of ticks are infected with Lyme disease. And often they're infected with other things as well, some of which can be fatal, like anaplasmosis mm -hmm. and babesiosis. So it is a significant public health concern in our area. And we know that Upstate is reopening its tick surveillance lab. How important is it to restart the program? And the county is funding this as well. So this is absolutely great news that the Upstate Tick Lab has reopened. This is a huge resource for our community. And the reason is information on this, which is changing, we think the problem's worsening, is really important for us as a community to know how do we advise people to prevent infection? How do we inform clinicians about what's circulating? And so having the finger on the pulse of this worsening situation is critical and it's great that the lab is open. Um, that's, I would say, the macro view of it. There is a small cost to it, um, but why would you say somebody should submit a tick if they find it on themselves, their loved one, a friend, whatever, um, and go through that process of having it tested? So the price is $75 for most people. For people who live in Onondaga County, it's half price. It's $37 because of the investment the county made. Yep. It's important to say that we don't recommend that people use the tick testing resource to guide their clinical care. If you have a tick on you, you're feeling ill, you should seek medical care. You should not wait for the results mm. of the test. But it might be at minimum interesting and at max informative for people to know what they're being exposed to in the areas that they go to in our community, what ticks they are and what they're carrying. And that may provide some additional information to them if they're not improving with traditional care. That's really important. And we know vigilance is also very important. There are dangers, obviously, but how much of a chance do you have fighting off Lyme disease if you're bitten by an infected tick? The most important thing with Lyme disease is to be vigilant about looking for ticks and then to seek care early um, if you're concerned that you might have Lyme disease. So let's talk first about what do you do if you're bitten by a tick. Mm -hmm. Don't panic. Um, it's unpleasant, but you have 36 hours after the tick attaches before it could transmit Lyme disease wow. from you oh. or to you. Once you have a tick on you, do not use a matchstick or petroleum jelly or those old remedies we used to hear about. You should take a fine tip tweezers, grasp it by the head, and pull up. If you think that you know when you were exposed and it's been more than 36 hours, you could consider going out and getting a prophylactic antibiotic dose, which may pre prevent you from getting Lyme. And then after that, watching the site to see if you develop any rashes. There's that characteristic Lyme disease rash that not all people get. But if you get a rash, if you start feeling flu-like symptoms, early treatment and seeing your primary care earlier is the best. Um. The advice the same for people because now as the weather's starting to improve, we're getting outside more, maybe hikes and walks and things like that, even just in your own backyard, really. It doesn't have to be anything uh, extravagant. Remind us again the best advice um, for being outside. Well, so the number one and number two is to do tick checks. Absolutely, yeah. every time you're outside. We know from our data that you can get exposed to ticks and Lyme disease in parks, on campuses, in recreational areas, in your backyard. So whenever you come inside, check your skin for ticks. The challenge is right now the ticks that are active, the deer ticks, are tiny. They're these little baby nymphal ticks that are about mm. the size of a poppy seed. Oh. So they can be missed quite easily. And so we really emphasize as well that people need to be wearing long pants and tucking them into their socks, wearing long sleeves, using sprays like beets and percaridin. And when you're out, the places that ticks really like to be would be the periphery of your yard, for example, or where there's tall grass or brush. Okay. Or if you're out hiking on a trail, the edges of the trails where there's tall grass. Mm. When you come inside, check yourself, check your dog, check your kids for ticks. Yeah. Glad you mentioned pets are important to you. Yeah. Gotta check yep. your dog, mm -hmm. too. Yep. Yeah. All right, Dr. Uh, Katie Anderson. Yeah. Thank, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you learned a lot. Nice. Yep, absolutely.